sure we make a fight before it's over. I'm just missing the Ringo. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the round 24 of the WBC Talk. Stay home, stay safe. And this time it's a boxing chat. It's a very friendly chat from all around the world. Uh, but first, let me introduce Sochi Lagarda. She's the director of the WBC University. Hello, Sochi. Hi, Victor. Hi, Maurice. I think Sochi has uh, audio problems, we, Victor. Uh -huh. Sochi, we okay. cannot oh. hear you. You're breaking oh. up. You cannot hear me? No? no? No. Yeah, now we can hear you. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yes, yes. yes. we can hear you. I was just telling you a new week is beginning and we must... No? Okay. Just go. No. Go. Thank you, Sochi. Vamos, Victor. Adelante. Now, uh, let me introduce Mauricio Suleiman, President of the World Boxing Council. Mauricio. Hello, Victor. Um, very excited about this round 24 of the WBC Talks. I have uh, three of my dear friends from the boxing world and all over the world, Ahmed smoking in Ramadan. Come on. <laughs> no, Ramadan is finished. So we have uh, Iftar is already. I, I see the light. I thought. Uh, no, 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 no. Today I was on injection medical treatment <laughs> and, and through these injections, you can't do Ramadan. Okay. Because it's also forbidden if you are pregnant or whatever, or doing a lot of really tough boxing work. If I would be fight, I can also not do it. Well, in so a that, that's why you return now. You, you come, back. <laughs> come back. I come back. I want to do a promoter fight. I'm looking for opponents. I'm Ali, looking for promoter. <laughs> Kale is training very well. I saw him. Look. He's a very well I mean, guy. But Ahmed looks in great shape, no chance. <laughs> I, listen, my dad used to promote Ahmed when he fought, so I will yeah, not get you know with Ahmed. I'm also your fighter, so Roberto, we can talk. Me and you, we can talk. But I, I, Ahmed is I'll be, out. I'll be the Ahmed matchmaker. Is, I'll, I'll be the matchmaker out. only. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be the referee. I'll be the referee. So, as you can see, it's going to be a very entertained uh, WBC talks. Roberto Diaz, my dear friend from Mexico, California, and Golden Boy, Ahmed Uner, and Kale Sauerland. Are you, Kale, are you in, in Germany? I am now in Germany. I was with my mom in London until uh, Easter Sunday, and then I came uh, to Germany, and now I'm in Hamburg. So, uh, nice. lockdown in Hamburg. But, but Germany's doing okay, you know? Germany's doing okay. A um, lot different atmosphere to London. A lot different atmosphere. London was, I've got to say, uh, I'm a Londoner. I grew up in London. I consider myself a Londoner. And it was horrible. It was, uh, I don't know how it is in Istanbul and in LA and in Mexico, obviously. Uh, and it's just, it's tragic when you see these great cities where I've had so many good times in, when I think about looking at you sitting there, Roberto, with the shades on in Los Angeles. And, uh, <laughs> you know, and, and uh, Mauricio, in my favourite bar in the world, uh, with a drum kit in the background with the Motley Crew, yeah. the ACDC, <laughs> and Ahmed in Istanbul, the best city to party in the world. I, I, feel, I feel really like it's just, you know, every day it's okay. I have a nice house. I live, you know, like my kids and dogs, everything, all good. But the freedom that is taken away from us to travel, to forget boxing for a minute, to see friends, to do this, this is what's really killing me. And uh, yeah. So I'm, I'm sure everyone feels the same. We'll get over it, and I'm sure we will be back stronger than ever. You know, piggybacking off what you just said, this has been a very humbling and learning experience. I mean, yes. obviously, 
it, it's Absolutely. something that we're still not over with. And, and oh, what a picture. What <laughs> yeah. a picture. Wow. The pink blazer. The pink hey, blazer. I love it. I love stuff. it. That's a beautiful blazer. That's a great but, night. But it's, you know, very Red humbling. Red That it's, <laughs> it, it personally, to me, it's shown that all the materialistic things we have, what good are they right now? You know, if, if, if you have that, the beautiful boat or you have the beautiful car or you have the beautiful, what good is it right now? We're on lockdown. Today is my 45th day. Right now, what I miss the most, obviously I'm here with my family. We're all healthy and thank God. What I miss the most, even more than our work and our fights, being able to spend moments like this, but together. And yeah. that's what, that's what is a great teaching. All we're going through, it's difficult, but if we all come out learning and appreciate each other more and, and are able to, then it was worth it because uh, that's what you miss the most. What good is it to have a great bottle of wine if I can't open it up with Mauricio, with Ahmed, with Kaylee, you know, with our friends and, and, and be able to break bread and, and just remember good times. Correct. Correct. Absolutely. Well, we, How's we, Istanbul? We, How's Istanbul, Ahmed? Kale, I'm not in Istanbul. I'm in Germany. I'm no! In Where yes. is Germany? In close to Dusseldorf, Dienstlaken. Oh, nice. Nice. I have all my kids with me. Uh, they moved to Germany. You know, I have a new relationship. And, yes, I know. Um, my sons are with me. I'm taking care. I was close um, to travel to America before Corona started. Because Avni is in training camp and my other fighter Hussein, they are all in camp and we have fights lined up. But now we are everybody in the same boat. I'm sitting and waiting that things will change. But I'm stuck in Germany. I can't travel anywhere. I can't go back to Istanbul. I can do nothing. I am here. Kalle, so, how, do you, how do you get from London to Germany? Plane uh, or? That, that, I, that I will have to tell you in a private conversation. <laughs> I, I think I, it feels like we're alone, but I think there might be some other people watching. So I'll, I'll, tell you, I'll tell you off air. <laughs> but it was, yeah, it was an interesting journey. Let's put it that way. It yeah, but President, journey. I drove with my car from Turkey before Corona started to Germany. Only Ahmed, countries. like a tank. <laughs> you drove, how many hours you drove? Uh, I spent two time in one time in a hotel in uh, Belgrade, so in Serbia, I drove uh, with rest 36 hours. Wow. And Ahmed only drives Rolls Royces and Bentley, so it was a comfortable <laughs> journey. Trust me, it was not in the back of a of a of a Skoda. <laughs> oh, Ahmed, Ahmed, when when he was in LA, he told me I, I made it to Big Bear from LA to Big Bear in one hour. I said, Ahmed, that's impossible. It's it's like a two hour drive going fast, and once you get up on the hill, you gotta go slow. I do it in one hour. He Trust called me. me. Look, I'm in Big Bear already. After we had dinner that night, Mauricio, the, 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 <laughs> an hour later, he was with pictures from Big Bear. <laughs> I, I, I've been in a car with Ahmed a few times. I'm still wearing Pampers today. <laughs> <laughs> Kali, where, do you remember when you met Ahmed? The, the first time? Yeah, yeah. tell me about your... I was 13, 14. Um, he was boxing a lot of my, uh, my dad's shows. Uh, and then over the years, I mean, we've had a lot of fighters together. We've had a lot of fights together. We've made up. <laughs> We've fallen in love again. Uh, but no, over the years, you know, we, 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 I couldn't consider Ahmed one of, one, of, uh, one of a few friends in the business. And, and you know, one thing and with Ahmed is what's never changed, right? What's never changed <laughs> is the passion, right? You know, and, and you know, uh, I mean, there was obviously a very famous press conference a couple of years ago. And, but the passion, the burning, I remember Ahmed said, Can I? I'm just doing Avni now, and uh, you know, I'm relaxed. I have my cows, I have my horses, I have my farms. I'm, uh, I said, Ahmed, listen, you're talking to me, man. You can tell this to everyone else, but you can't tell it to me. Yeah. And the passion in Ahmed, uh, you know, people, you know, around the world, they, they take uh, testosterone and whatever. Ahmed doesn't need that. He's natural, <laughs> he's the definition. When you look in the dictionary of natural testosterone, there's a picture of Ahmed next to it. 
and that, God help him, will never go. So when he's 90 and telling me, Can I, I've got this fighter, right? <laughs> right? But don't worry, don't worry. <laughs> you know? and, and it's, uh, but it's, you know, it's, it's, and the great thing is, you know, uh, there's so many great stories to share. We've had great stories with Roberto, of course, as well. And with don't look at him. Cannot stop. He's been. I'm. I'm DC from. <laughs> you, have you ever seen Ahmed sit on a seat for more than two minutes? I don't think so. Can you imagine? Not, not even at a press conference. Not even at a press conference. You can't. Keep, you need a seatbelt for him. <laughs> so, uh, Kale, you have nice words. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. It comes from your heart. Yeah, no, it's, it's the truth. <laughs> that's, that's what Thank it is. You. That's what it when is. you accept me like this, I'm happy. You know I am. <laughs> Roberto, when, where did you meet Ahmed? Do you remember? Yes, um, I met him in Germany. I met him in Germany. I, it was in Hamburg at a convention. I was sitting with Bronco from South Africa. And in walks Ahmed. And just the testosterone <laughs> starts yelling at, at somebody on the table. And I remember asking Bronco, hey, who is this guy? Oh, he's a promoter from here in Germany. Uh, you know, he, he's a good guy, but that he was yelling and you can't do this and you can't do that. And it, so he walked out. He stormed out. I'm sorry, he didn't walk out. He stormed out. So after that seminar was over, I went to introduce myself because I said, I like this guy. He doesn't hold back. You know, he's, he's real. And I think that's what all these years have made us such good friends. He tells me something, he sticks to it. I tell him something, uh, he believes me, we give our word and that's it. I mean, we've had a, a very good relationship. I mean, I, I've never, I don't think uh, I've had an argument or a discussion with him, never. you know, we didn't agree sometimes on uh, a couple of fighters he wanted us to sign at, at one point and I told him. I, I don't like this guy. I don't like that guy. I like this one, but it was it was a crazy scene when he walked in, like a like he walked into a cantina as a as a vaquero. You know, he came in like a cowboy and stormed up the place, and then he walked out. <laughs> I said I want to meet him, and then we we had a very probably one of my I tell the story probably one of my worst nights in boxing. And a night that I'll never forget. And it was with Ahmed. And it, it ended up being a normal night. But during the period, it was very, very tough. I've told Ahmed the story. Um, we had a fight. Roberto Guerrero, Robert Guerrero was fighting uh, Selkuk Aydin mm -hmm. in San Jose. And Aydin was the champion. Golden Boy was promoting the fight. Ahmed comes in minutes before they were to walk and says, we're not walking first. We're walking second. We're the champion. And I'm like, Ahmed, come on, just, it doesn't matter. Uh, just walk. It, it, that's how we have it. Look, the bout you. No, 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 no. We ended up fixing Aydin walks. Robert Guerrero walks at him. The fight starts. Literally in the second round, I get a text from a cousin who doesn't really know boxing and says, why is Guerrero wearing, wearing smaller gloves than Aydin? So I look at my phone and I'm like, ah, I don't pay attention. Eric Gomez now calls me and says, hey, are you sure you gave both eight ounce gloves? But now two people. Now I'm starting to worry. Whoa, wait a minute. Of course I gave them both eight ounce. But now I'm doubting myself because what if I didn't? Tomorrow's headline, controversy, golden boy, this, this. Roberto, you're fired. I had just started. <laughs> so... <laughs> As the rounds go by, Ahmed's sitting next to his partner. And the partner gets a call from Yorkis Gamboa. Hey, the gloves are different sizes. All of a sudden, I hear Ahmed go crazy on me. You, you. And because we're on a family show and it's not the hour, I'll keep it beep, 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 beep. And I'm like, Ahmed, never, never. But now I'm drenched in sweat. Now I'm just hoping the lights go out. I sneak out the back, jump in a car, and get out of town. And, and I'm just worried now, the headlines. What is going to happen tomorrow? The fight's over. And I said, Ahmed, 
check the gloves. I gave them to your corner. They, they were, saw them yesterday at the gloves, at the weigh-in. So I run up to the referee and I said, hey, did you check the gloves? They're both eight ounce, right? And the ref's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But now I don't believe them. I go to the supervisor who was Che Guevara and I said, uh, for the commission. And I said, Che, did you check the gloves? Yeah, they're both eight ounce, yes. But I'm worried now because I said any minute when they take off the gloves, if they say 10 and we all know Ahmed and the testosterone, there was going to be punches flying. I turn around, they're given the decision. I turn around, everybody's calm. So now I'm figuring, yeah, they were eight ounces. So I go to Ahmed and I said, see, now do you believe me, brother? <laughs> By this time, I'm stuck. I have no more sweat. My heart's going like this. And Ahmed's like, no, 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 you're fine. It's okay. It's okay. What happened, and I found out later, is the white gloves give an illusion. We're not used to seeing the white gloves. And they gave an illusion of bigger gloves. He was wearing, I think, Reyes. Yes. They were just, they, they looked bigger than Guerrero's red gloves. But that was a night I'll never forget. And that, that at that night, Ahmed said, oh, now I trust you, bro. <laughs> you, you didn't screw me. Yeah, it was hot. I got many calls. Everybody called me <laughs> said to me, you have 10 ounces. I said, oh, it, oh, I, I said oh, unbelievable. It's impossible. And how I explained to my fighter who I am. I am a nobody. Mm -hmm. So they put, put, put me. I, can't, I, could, I, I couldn't accept it. So, President, I see you in your nice room with the nice belts. I want my fighters to wear one of these belts. We were together here in January, Ahmed. Yes, I believe not in January. I believe in February. February, I believe. February, February. February. Yes, I came with the heavyweight. With the heavyweight and your partners and yes, we have a picture Germany. exactly like what. No tienes la foto de Ahmed? No creo. Se las mandé ayer. So, Victor, you you wanted to ask a few things to to the guys. Yeah, I would love to ask, how did you get involved in boxing? Who you ask? You. I All came in boxing. Them. I was I was a fighter. I started 1997 with my first pro fight. When I was young, I was amateur. When I was 15, I started originally as an amateur, made some breaks, never went to the national team. But I made a couple of fights as amateur. Then I went pro. Uh, like Kale said, the biggest promoter in that time was Kale's father, Sawala. Later, he made an iron on me. I was a good ticket seller. We sold a lot of arenas. I fought an undercard of big fights. Sven Otke, Marcus Bayer, former world champions. And then Peter Cole. I met with him. I signed a new heavyweight from Turkey. Rest in peace, Sinan Shami Sam. He was my first project, my first right, friend, right. Right. my right. first fighter. And this guy, I worked with him from his beginning as a pro till to the end. And uh, I changed, I, start, I signed him as Peter Cole. I signed him later to Carlos Faza. We had good times. And then I went back to Peter Cole and then I built my own company, Arena Boxing. And then Peter Cole and me, we had a time of uh, fighting each other. We were rivals <laughs> in Hamburg. <laughs> And everybody knows this, and this is one of the meetings. Many things happen. I got shot down, beaten up, whatever. We beat guys. Nobody ever beat me in life one to one. But I eight saw. Guys, I, watched. I saw a video when they punch you big time. Wow, eight and, guys, and they were and, and they, they were, were all... taller than Tyson Fury. They were taller than Tyson Fury. Yeah, the they were. They were real tall. tall. Like Deontay Wilder, the biggest one was like Valuev. But I said, you you could have walked out. Yeah, I walked out. I no listen, they they came in front of me and I said to myself, I am a man or I'm not a man. <laughs> so I have to take the challenge. You see the and photo here or not? You see the photo? Yeah, wonderful. Yes, my friend Anar, my fighter who say Mohammed, they are right now in um, Indio, 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 training with Roy Diaz. Again, regards Roy Diaz, very good guy. And my fighter, very disciplined training, but we are missing now, actually. Nice time it was. Thank you very much. It was really a nice moment. That was the uh, night before the Super Bowl. 
Yes, it was fantastic. You yeah. were so great. Listen, you know I call you Papa. You are my Papa. It was wonderful to be in your house, to be with my fighter. And, you know, I teach every of my fighter. There's only one organization, WBC. Yes. So, um, and Robert, this is... how, how did you start in boxing, Roberto? I have, uh, it's a crazy story because I'd always loved boxing. My dad instilled it in me, um, always watching the big fights, watching Salvador Sanchez, watching Chavez at home, watching Oscar later on through the years. But my break in boxing was I met one of my favorite fighters at a mall in San Diego during the Christmas season, Marco Antonio Barrera. I approached him like any other fan would have uh, to get a picture, to get an autograph. In fact, the phones back then didn't even have cameras, so it was just to get an autograph. And I, I couldn't find nothing in the mall boxing related to have him sign. So I asked him, if I give you my address, would you send me something? And he did. He sent me a package. Then he was going to fight. This is before the Eric Morales fight, the first one. He was going to do an exhibition uh, in Indio, California, out of all places. And I lived in San Diego, so I drove out to watch him, he remembered me and introduced me to the team, introduced me to everybody. And we, be, we became very close friends. He started bringing me around to the fights, invited me uh, to carry the flag. I mean, my first <laughs> experience was to carry the flag. And that was thought, your, first, your first position in boxing. That was my first position. To carry the flag for Barrera. Yes. And it was a great experience as a fan. I, you know, record watching it, showing off to friends, look, that's me in the, with the flag and being part of the trilogy with Morales and the Hamed fights. When he separated from his originally promoter, uh, Forum Boxing and, and the Maldonados and went over to Golden Boy, he called me and asked, hey, uh, I'm going to break away. I'm going to go into with Oscar de la Hoya. Would you want to work with me? Or, you know, do you want to stay with me? Or are you going to stay with the Maldonados? Because I had gained a good relationship with both. And I said, no, well, Marco, the relationship with the Maldonados is because of you. You're the fighter. You're who I admire and you, I'm with you. Today we're compadres. I'm a, a godfather to his firstborn. And obviously I worked with Marco and Golden Boy, uh, getting, you know, advising the, the fights, negotiating with, with the Golden Boy staff and, be, and got a very good relationship going with Golden Boy. That years later when Marco retired, uh, I got the call. Hey, uh, would you be interested in working for Golden Boy? And to be honest, Mauricio, I, I, I didn't, I mean, it's a dream come true to this day um, to meet people from all over the world, work with these tremendous athletes, um, being in something that I love, that I have so much passion for, but I didn't think it was going to work. And I was talking to Victor earlier, if life gives us these opportunities, but it's up to us whether we take them or not. If I wouldn't have gone in with Marco when Marco said, do you mind, do you want to come with me over to Golden Boy and you work and negotiate my deals, my fights? I had never negotiated anybody's fights, much less anybody at that level. If I say, no, I'm not capable of that, I wouldn't be where I am today. And I told, I said, you know what? Yeah, absolutely. I had always been involved in sales and business and, and, and knew how to talk, but it was a moment where I didn't sleep for a few days. Oh my God, what if I mess up this man's career or this legend's career? And remember his first fight with Golden Boy? He got stopped by Manny Pacquiao. So I'm thinking, oh my God. And yes, I was one when he asked me, what do you think of this Pacquiao kid? He wasn't, nobody knew what he was going to turn out to be. I had seen the fight with Agapito Sanchez. And I'm like, he's fast, Marco. But I don't think he's any more difficult than Nassim Hamed, so let's go forward. And, <laughs> you know, he, he could have lost his contract right there, and it would have been like, okay, Roberto, you told me he was, you know. So <laughs> luckily, uh, you know, we continued on, and and I learned a lot from Marco. during. I learned a lot from him on the promotional side because I was negotiating with Golden Boy, but I learned a lot because I would be in camp with him and all the sacrifices fighters go through. Uh, I thought, th there you are. There's the flag, but there's no you. <laughs> no, no, I'm behind it. I'm behind <laughs> You're it. Right, you're behind it. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, you know, I learned how much to respect some of these fighters because all the sacrifices they put and leaving their families. I had to leave my family. Uh, the running, the dieting, the training. Um, 
sometimes going, we went, I remember six, seven weeks in camp and then getting the call saying the fight's off because your opponent got injured. We'll reschedule you later. Nobody gets paid, you know, go back home, take a little break until the next camp. So it's, it's, you learn both sides. And now being in, in my position at Golden Boy, which I'm going on 13 years, it helps when you negotiate with them because you've been in camp, when you talk to the fighters, when you're presenting a fight to, to say, look, this can change your life. I, it, it may be a tough fight, but there's no impossibles in boxing. So it's, it's, it's been a, a very fun journey. I mean, meeting people from all over the world, as we have right now, that's what boxing does for us. Ali? Yeah, well, fa both fascinating stories. By the way, Barrera is one of my top five all-time fighters. I love Barrera. I love all his fights. Uh, we're we're going to do this later on. So start thinking. Yeah. Your top five, top, top ten. Top five all-time, yeah? Yeah, okay. start thinking, okay? It's gonna Barrera's be in there. Hagler, okay. Barrera. Um, yeah, no, I mean, I, I didn't really have much choice, Mauricio. A bit like you, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, uh, I was born with a boxing nuts father. You know, his, his main business was breweries in Africa. Uh, he went into boxing in the 70s. Um, and, you know, he was hell bound when I was growing up to have a world champion. Actually, his first two world champions were both green belt holders, Rocky Dani and John Mugabe. And, you know, growing up, my life was, was a bit different to normal kids because... On my walls, I had the KO magazine at the time. It doesn't exist anymore. The ring, obviously, you know, the posters. And, you know, I, I would live in London. My dad has, uh, was married five times. So, you know, he was all over the place. Um, five, but we, we'd times. See, I'd see him every two, yeah, five times, you know. I mean, uh, yeah, busy guy. And, um, you, know, but he, you know, but he was a very dedicated dad. So every two weeks... If he was in Africa, he would fly to London for the weekend. We'd spend the London weekend, but it, the London weekend would be a big lunch on a Sunday. And the Sunday lunch was always a boxing lunch. So we had Mickey Duff was always there, who was the biggest promoter in the UK at the time. You know, Frank Bruno would come, uh, Denny Mancini, the, uh, the cornerman manager from, from the, uh, and he was more or less a little bit my godfather growing up. And I used to skip school, sneak off school and go hang out in the Lonsdale shop in Soho. And then in the summers, I'd work, you know, do the buckets in the gyms just to, just to be around boxing. You know, it was, um, it was crazy. And then, and then I, I discovered football and I sort of, I had enough of boxing. I went into football and I started doing a lot of, I, I managed the Brazil national team, took them around the world uh, on, a, on the Brazil World Tour, uh, opened up Wembley, uh, Wembley Stadium with them, uh, the Emirates, Arsenal, uh, and did a lot of, a lot of, lot of uh, different things in football. But then I got dragged back to the dark side in the mid twenties, <laughs> and, um, and the dark side called, and I did. I remember I did. Uh, saw my first fighter was Alexander Povetkin uh, when he won the gold in uh, in Russia, and you know I just got hooked on the on the on the whole thing again. It was like uh, I'd had my time out in soccer, and football, which I still do a bit today. But I came back. But I'd grown up seeing boxing in a very different way because I'd come over for for, for the for the big fights. I'd party like a lunatic, right? Literally come over, watch the fight. It was more interesting than the fight was for me, the after party, and, and go off. But I, I grew up seeing all these big events, but it, it really fascinated me was the way that in Germany they made, they really celebrated events. So, you know, you had the big rock bands. We had, I don't know, Meat Loaf. Uh, we had uh, Roland Kitty. All, 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 all these different performers coming into it and turning it into a real entertainment event. And, you know, I still think today, when we, what we do with the World Boxing Super Series, that, that influenced it very much. But, um, you know, it's, it's something I think you have it in your blood. You can try and run. And I was just laughing when that picture came up with Ahmed's fighters. And I'm, and I'm just remembering, Ahmed, do you remember I took you to my gentleman's club in London when we met on the terrace, you know, on that nice garden outside? Yes, yes, yes. Just, and, and you said to me, Kala, listen, I'm out of boxing. Avni is the last one, right? But I like the kid. I don't know how good he is. We're going to see. I want him to go in. We're going to test him. And by the way, now we've seen in the Durrell fight what Avni can do. Yeah? Yes. What a great Thank fighter. You. And he will go on to be a world champion. I said that at the time. I said the Eubank fight was a big learning curve for him. Agreed. And, 
and he came back and, and he, you know, big fighters, they always come to that point after a loss. They can go off and be a bum or they can get their shit together and be a man. And he manned up. He manned up against Darrell. But coming back to this, this is what I was talking about. I was talking about you. So, so, so this, is, this is how you don't, you don't run from boxing. It will find you. It will find you in the darkest corner. You can try and run, but you can't hide. And Ahmed told me that morning, we were sitting there having bacon and eggs outside in the sun. Ahmed was eating so much healthier than me. And we're sitting there and he's going, oh, Kelly, you will understand. I'm in this now. I'm in this now. You know, Ahmed is always, always involved in other businesses. He always has been. But I remember, I remember when Ahmed had Suntan Studios. I mean, he's been in everything. <laughs> this guy is, he's been in everything. But he, so he says to me, and he says, Kelly, you've got to understand. I, Let's see, I don't give a shit. Let's see the kid. He promises me he's great, and you know, we'll see. And I told him, don't embarrass me, but this is the last one. And now I see him seeing you, Mauricio, with his new fighters. So you can see you can't run from boxing. So, so however true. you got started, it doesn't matter. Once you're in, you don't leave. It's like the mafia, you know, you don't leave boxing. Boxing is you can't get out. We will find you, right? And we need characters. We need characters like Roberto, like Ahmed. You know, we need them. You know, so there's no running. You know, Ahmed, you can go and, and, and do cattle farming in northern Turkey or whatever. It don't matter. It it's will like, find you. The dark like, side will always find you. It's like the Hotel <laughs> California. It, it's, it's worse. It's worse. Hotels close. You've seen that with coronavirus. <laughs> this hotel don't close. It's boxing. That's so I'm true. Sorry about the rambling speech, but anyway, that, that's my feeling. So, however you got into boxing, it's great. But the one fact is, once you're in, you don't leave. End of. That's, that's so true what Kelly says, because when I saw Ahmed after a few years uh, not seeing him, and he introduced Abni to me, he said, that's it, brother. No more, you know, Jim, I'm, I moved to Turkey. Uh, only Abney because he needs me and I'm going to help him. He's a good kid, but that's it. And now comes the heavyweight and now yeah, comes yeah. this other one. <laughs> you, don't run. You, can, you can't get out, you know? That's the fact. That's a fact, you know? Kale. You name, name me one big promoter who's ever left boxing. I got, I, 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 the only way to leave is you die, right? There is no way out. I, don't, I can't name you one. Name me one big promoter who is actually Even left Morgan Spalle, still active. He's still active. He's still, he's still active. He's still affording my side. He still calls me the bloody Bratwurst from Germany. You know, he's, he's 80 God knows what, and he still wakes up in the morning and hates Kalasauerland. You know, <laughs> but that is life. You know, that's, that's life, you know. And you can't get out of it, you know. It's, it's, it is what it is, you know. It, we're, so, we're in it for the long run. When, when you have these shows, Kale, you, you had the Scorpions. You had a great yeah. group. Who, what groups played uh, in your in your in your fights? Meat, we had Meatloaf, we had uh, Scorpions, um, Bocelli, Bocelli. Well, I, I the, but yeah, exactly. The most famous one was uh, Bocelli. You know wow. the song "Time to Say Goodbye." This is a great little story. Yes. Actually. I'll give you a nice little story. So we had the last fight of Henry Maskin. We didn't really know it was a last fight, but unofficially, everyone knew it. He was fighting Virgil Hill, and. We had uh, Sarah Brightman, who was this big star from Broadway, who was often singing on our shows as well. She and was a duet. Exactly. And she did a duet with Bocelli. And they wrote the song Time to Say Goodbye. If you bought it, if you see, uh, they don't make CDs anymore, unfortunately. But in the CD, you'll see it says dedicated to the boxer Henry Masker. So they offered my dad a deal at the time. I got, I'm making up the numbers now. But let's say 100 grand and we buy it out or you get royalties. So my dad said, forget royalties on the bloody song. He said, you know, we take the 100 grand and run. Yeah, I mean, that fucking song was the biggest selling song on planet Earth that year, with the exception of, it was the year that Diana died, with the exception of uh, Candle in the Wind. Every other song, it, it, royalties, you know, that wow. 100 meter yacht, it would have been that much closer. So, so you, know, it, it, you know, sometimes in life, you know, uh, you make the wrong calls and, uh, but yeah, I mean, and it, it was, uh, it was, you know, but you know, the, when you meet and you mix um, entertainment, music and boxing, 
you know, you talk, you talk about the Scorpions. Um, you know, when you have these big rock bands or big, uh, big artists playing together with entrances, that's what attracts new fans. The hardcore, they don't really give a shit. But the new fans, and that's what made it, uh, that's what, for me, created a, a big part of the boxing boom in Germany. Listen, when the, when the, the clitch goes for, you know, with all due respect, they were just too good. Yeah. But ultimately, you ch the, 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 I always said the bigger the, the show around the event, you knew the opponent was worse. You know, the better the opponent, the less of the show. But it was, yeah. you know, for them, the people didn't tune in because the Klitschko's were fighting. They were, they were tuned in because, I don't know, uh, uh, Ronald McDonald was performing the song before the fight. That was, it was, it was a huge show. And, and it was, it was vital as well. I mean, Henry Masker, uh, you know, I don't want to pick on the Klitschko's, but Henry Masker was the most boring fighter you've ever seen. I mean, you could not watch, He's you'd a rather watch paint dry, right? You'd rather watch paint dry. Yeah, and it was terrible. I mean, it was it was a great fighter, but it was so boring. So all these things around it, the celebs at ringside, you know, Michael Schumacher when he was in his heyday, yeah, and and Boris Becker, you, you couldn't make up the celebrities that that came. Alain Delon it was incredible. It was it was it was like the Monaco Grand Prix, but the, you know, it, it took away, of course, a lot from from the boxing in a way. But it was bloody lucky because it was Henry Masker at the time who was, like I said, not the most exciting fighter. You wouldn't pay five quid to watch him fight. And wow. that's talking about our fighter, so, I, so sorry Henry if you're watching, but you weren't, you weren't excited. He's not watching. He's not watching. <laughs> <laughs> He's not watching, don't worry. I take your, I care for your back, don't worry. He's not watching. <laughs> Thanks, well, well, I know you've got my back. What, what, what is the strangest or funniest thing that has ever happened to you in boxing? Ah, oh, come on. I can write a book. Mm. Oh, that's a tough one. That's a tough one. I mean, <laughs> one that, like I said earlier about the gloves, but I think the funniest, the funniest uh, was we were doing a Telefutura show. Now, I got hired uh, at Golden Boy in an October when Ricky Hatton fought. Floyd Mayweather. It was at the end. Uh, I, I was in Manchester. I did the whole camp with Ricky and some sparring partners. But I don't start in the office till January of the following year. I never got the, let's go, this is how you do a show. And, you know, the step-by-step. -step. It was, here's the keys. You got the first show. Um, I think it was Boston. And then the second show was in Chicago. So, First of all, I grew up in, in Merida, Yucatan, Southern California. No, you know, I didn't like the cold. And Boston in January or February was freezing, snowing. Uh, Chicago was even worse. But I get to the Telefutura show. Um, I remember the fight, the main Where? event. It was in Boston. In Boston. Yes. Beautiful castle, an old castle. Um, that was the venue but I have problem in the main event and I'm the only one at golden boy there. Uh, like I said, I was sent and they just, you know, you know what to do. Boom. I had never done a show before on my own, except when I was part of a fighter camp. So I get there and we have problem with the weigh in. Um, it was Antonio Escalante against the kid that Nacho Benny Stein had, um, the Ranza, the Ranza. and Escalante doesn't make weight. So Nacho, Jaime Quintana, and Barranza said, hey, call us when he's ready. He comes back, and they leave. Escalante comes back, and he says, hey, I'm ready to make weight. I said, well, let me call the other team because they got to witness it. And I call them, but they're not coming back. Five minutes pass, 10 minutes pass. Escalante gets on me, and he says, hey, who am I? Am I the Golden Boy fighter, or are they? I said, no, no, but we, we have to show them that you made weight. So 15, 20 minutes passed, and I called them, and I said, look, I'm getting them on the scale. I can't wait no longer. This kid needs to hydrate. So I get all production. Uh, uh, Victor Baguette was there. I get everybody. The commission, of course, is there. And I said, hey, please, everybody witness this because I don't want to have a problem with the other guy. This is my first show. He gets on the scale, makes weight. Jaime Quitanda walks in, and he's drinking Gatorade. Escalante. And Jaime is like, I didn't witness this. I said, Jaime, I called you. You're 30 minutes late. I had to get the kid on the scale. We didn't witness it. He has to make weight or else there's no fight. I said, what do you mean there's no fight? There's no fight. 
Well, the guy, I arranged it for the fight. Victor Baguet passes by later. I had just met Victor at the weigh-in and I'm putting the ring cover and dressing up the ring. And he had asked me, who are you? I said, I'm Roberto Diaz with Golden Boy. I'm the matchmaker. Oh, please meet you. And then later he sees me. What are you doing? I'm putting the ring cover, the ring dressing. I thought you were the matchmaker. I said, I am. But I couldn't get none of the ring guys to pay them to do it. They were all gone. It was winter and then and, and they were gone. They went home. So, so you're a matchmaker, you're a <laughs> ring, but you're the flag guy. <laughs> no. and the ring card girl too. And, and the ring card girl, exactly. So at that point, <laughs> it's snowing. The, the fights are over. I have to go with the hotel cart back to the hotel with all the ring dressing. It was like four blocks to get to the hotel. Obviously, by this time, it's 11 o'clock, 11.30 at night. I go to the restaurant because I'm hungry. I've been there early. The restaurant's closed. All, everything around is closed. So I remember calling Carla, my wife, and saying, you know what? I think I'm going to quit. This is not for me. This is not for me. And again, 13 years later, here we are. We can't leave boxing. Kaylee's right. <laughs> <laughs> Great one. Great Ahmed, one. you have a story, Ahmed? You know, my yes, stories many. are always a little different. Um, my biggest upset was when Solis fought Klitschko. And um, I was very, with high expectations, the fight. And when Ben Bernte, after the fight, started to talk about uh, uh, comparing the fight Solis against Klitschko with Mike Tyson, we see Trevor Burbick. And Malte, he was in that time my worker, he said to me, Ahmed, Ben Bernte is saying uh, he has nothing on the knee, he no meniscus problems. Uh, Vitaly Klitschko knocked him out like Mike Tyson knocked out Trevor Burbick. Then I got mad and I ran into the press conference. <laughs> I started to shout. I said, Vitaly, by all the respect, I respect you. You are a great champion. But this guy, sorry, is a son of a bitch. I don't like him. He's a cunt. He's provocating. He's talking shit. He's so fucking stupid. And then Ben Bernte started to interfere in my talks and And then I yelled at him, shut up, and yeah, and everything. You know, in that time I was married. Uh, you know, my ex-wife, father was Vitaly's coach. And I apologized by everybody. Everybody was on the stage. And it was very loud. It was used many times. Kale now is on TV, on big late night shows. This action. And of course, later the thing with, with the press conference by... Carlos Sauer and Chris Eubank, <laughs> which, by the way, <laughs> was the best. I've never listen. I, you know, I've heard a lot of insults in my time, but this one <laughs> was. And you've got to look back at it, Ahmed. Look back at it and watch my head. Watch. I'm looking this way, and then when you say it, I've never moved my neck so fast in my life. I go. <laughs> It's like it's, it was the, it was the, it was the, did he just say that? He, and and it was the, the, the was the way you said it was the, the funniest. <laughs> and I mean, went viral. You know, I mean, the bloody thing went viral. I mean, the the, the fact you made up that excuse in that 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 insult in that sentence was a uh, poetic genius. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but I could listen. When you I ask mean, Mauricio, when you ask about funny stories, half of them I'm not allowed to say here. The other half of them are involving Ahmed, right? <laughs> so I'm, only, I'm only left with a couple. <laughs> I'm only left with a couple. <laughs> but uh, but I, I tell you a funny one in the negotiation. Right? This was this was the last fight. I think it was the last fight of Amanda Holyfield. We got him over. It was it was a comeback fight of I don't know if you remember Super Brian Nielsen who fought Mike Tyson. Big Remember. Danish sailor lump, right? Real old school, right? And and it was the, the, the TV station in Denmark was very hot on the fight. It was a big pay-per-view there. We put it on in the Royal uh, Royal Orchestra Hall from the Queen, which was the last boxing fight they ever allowed in there. It was the first and the last. And <laughs> But in the negotiation, so Brian, you've got to imagine, imagine an old tough sailor, right? He has got fat on him but underneath that fat is a steel plate you know he's one of these guys he just doesn't look the part but he could he could fight a bit and we're sitting in the negotiation 
and I'm going to make the numbers up. So if there's any clever reporter on here, don't get any ideas. The numbers are made up. So let's say I'm at a million bucks, right? He's going to be, yeah, but you know, Keller, you know, and, and he looks like he drinks about 25 pints of beer a day. Um, <laughs> and, and I'm going to him, I said, yeah, but you know, you know what Evander Holyfield looks like? Are you going to get in shape? Listen, I'm telling you, you make it 1.1 and I'm going to look like I've never looked before, right? He hasn't boxed in four years, yeah? So I'm like, right, okay, listen, wait, wait, what are you going to do? So like, will you train in Germany? I was going to send it a German trainer. I'll train wherever you want me to train. You make it 1.1 1 .1 and, and we got a deal and I will be so fit, live so healthy. And, you know, it's going to be, it, I'm going to come out, I'll look 20 years younger. There we go. That's Brian. That's his Brian. And that's after the training camp, though. This is not when I was talking to him, right? This is after the <laughs> grueling eight-week from hell Sauerland training camp. So anyways, he, so I said to him, I said, you know what, Brian? That's a really nice suggestion. Let me go outside. At the time, I was still smoking quite a lot. I said, I'm going to go outside. I'm going to have a cigarette, and I'm going to think about it. He said to me, that's great. I'll come with you and have one as well. <laughs> so that was the end of the negotiation i'm standing outside thinking i'm paying this guy another hundred thousand dollars to get healthy and i'm standing here making my mind up while i'm having a cigarette with a fucker <laughs> uh, that was one of the funniest negotiations and, and the whole thing was 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 hysterical the whole uh, it was it, it, he survived the 10 rounds he asked for a rematch afterwards <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and now he's living happily ever after in Marbella with the money. So um, good luck to him. <laughs> so, yeah, great guy. And uh, one, one that will go in the book one day, that story. There's a lot more of him. A lot more of him. We can write a book together. <laughs> <laughs> in Germany, that would be a bestseller, I tell you. <laughs> I believe so. Yeah, don't offer him. All the guns and roses. <laughs> and which, which is your favorite fighter my favorite fighter yes my favorite fighter is you know him Avni Yildirim and he's my favorite fighter <laughs> <laughs> he's a promoter absolutely, see he's a promoter absolutely. Yeah. no bias there absolutely no bias there <laughs> great, <laughs> guy. Ahmed, great guy all send time. him my love Ahmed please yeah, all, send him all, my love. Time. Who is all time yeah yeah all yeah, yeah. time okay all time to be honest all time uh, Your hero. You can say two. I can say two. Of course, we have always to put Muhammad Ali in a special place because of his personality. But I think very special. I'm more heavyweight man. I love Evander Holyfield, and then also he's one of both guys. They are special. So uh, I'm not more for the smallers. You know, I I respect them, but in Europe is a different culture. You know, so. Ivan the Holyfield and Lennox Lewis in the new times. Mike Tyson was an attraction, but these are the number ones. They are for me really special. Good of course, in the younger weight is Joe Calzaga and everybody. They're they good guys, of course. I, I've always been, I mean, I was huge. One of my, one of my first memories of boxing is Muhammad Ali. Um, my, my plates are customized plates that say Ali Goat. And then I have the Goat Ali for my son's car. Um, so Muhammad Ali has always been, and, and it's inside and outside the ring. I think even back in that time, he was way ahead of the time and, and just what he did and how he talked and how he promoted and, and the message he sent, you know, to try to create it. It was like comical, but there was a message always behind. He was just very, very, very smart, spectacular man. Uh, but if we put him in a, separate category and, and outside of Ali would be Sugar Ray Leonard, who to me was from the school of Ali, very similar uh, and, and a tremendous fighter. And going with that same, if we put Julio Cesar in a different category as a Mexican that we always have Julio Cesar there, I, I think Salvador Sanchez. I, I really love Salvador Sanchez, his boxing. Um, he died way, way too young. So we didn't see how great he could have become after. But even in the short period, he did so much. And and uh, I was always a big Sanchez fan growing up. 
Kale. I mean, uh, obviously, Ali, uh, not not purely on the boxing, is, is he, he, we'll leave him out of this because he is, for me, the greatest. Uh, Marvin Hagler, without a question, without even thinking about it. Uh, current boxers, uh, I would say Tyson Fury. Up and coming, Philip Hergovich. And uh, I think of the other chance <laughs> all the way to, I think, Josh Taylor. You know, um, I think he's a great one as well. I think he's going to do a lot of great things as well still. So, um, we've got that big Ramirez fight probably going to get made. So, I think those are that's my spread. But of all time, marvellous Marvin Hagler. Like I said to Roberto before, I think Marco Antonio Barrera is definitely in the top five, if not the top three. Agreed. Uh, five, top five. I, you see, wow. I, for, me, for me, I don't go on a fighter's record. I don't really care about the record. Uh, Hagler lost fights and... I go on what, what, what fights are in their legacy. And my favourite all-time fight is Hagler Hugs. I can watch that. Wow. In fact, I, I think I've watched that so many times, uh, you know, but, but it never gets boring because it was full, he was full of hatred for the man. And, and it, was, it was real hatred. <laughs> it, was, it was scary stuff, you know. And, and I, think, um, I think if you look at what, uh, what Tyson Fury has gone and done, for the sport of the heavyweight boxing, um, you know, we can talk about uh, AJ, bless, bless you, you, bless you, bless you. Bless you. Um, at, at the sport of heavyweight boxing, what, what, what Joshua's gone and done and what, what Deontay Wilder's gone and done. But let's, let's, be, let's be serious about this. This is the man who beat Klitschko after 10 years of a, being Klitschko at the top. Definitely this true. is the one guy who worked out, and uh, by the way, I had a lot of guys fighting Klitschko and a lot of guys losing to Klitschko. Povetkin, Pulev, you name them. So they all tried one thing. They tried to hit that chin that was three times broken, right? Three times knocked out. So everyone went for that chin, right? And probably he had a shit chin. But one thing that Emmanuel Stewart, the great Emmanuel Stewart did, was show him how to protect that chin, right? Snatch and grab, right? Not pretty, but effective. Fury... Didn't, wasn't interested in one minute in knocking him out. He was interested in beating him as a boxer. And no one tried that. It was, it was, it was, at the night when it happened, I was like, fuck, fuck. Because I believe that there were other boxers who could have done that as well. But everyone went for that chin. And that, for me, was, was, was you know, you could talk about that he behaved in a certain way in the build-up. doesn't matter. He's an entertainer. We watch him, right? He's controversial. We watch him, you know, and, and, and for me, he brought back heavyweight boxing that night. I know he went off and then he had a you know, terrible time and, 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 and did certain things. And guess what? He came back again and did it again. You know, so it's like, you know, he did it from again. that point of view, I think he's, a, he's, he, he's the real, forget this bloody lineal, whatever they call it. I can't even work. I don't know how you decide the lineal one. I mean, that's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. But he is the real heavyweight champion and whoever wants to be champ now needs to beat him well win that wbc belt they need to but he he is the man to beat he, they can make wilder joshua all day long great fight no doubt about it but the man to beat is tyson fury end of absolutely i agree with you 100 percent. agree also absolutely and, it, you know, and by the way we all listen tyson great pal i love tyson i think he's a great guy but you know what we all benefit from it, whether it's the other promoters. It, it's just great for the sport. We can talk about boxing. And, you know, we can talk all day long about the smaller weights. And I know that, in, especially in, uh, in, in Latin America and, and, and with the Latinos in America, it, it's, a, it's just as important as heavyweight boxing. But worldwide, worldwide, the heavyweights are the heavyweights. You know, that's why, you know, that's why, you know it's... Uh, in German, you call it the Königsklasse, the class of the kings. And that is something that outside of America, um, that's, is, it, it's, vital that's why I, it's vital for boxing. If Floyd, who's massive star, Floyd walked down the street in Berlin, or Manny Pacquiao walked down the street in Berlin, I don't think many people would stop him. Nobody would care for them. No one would give a shit. Tyson but Fury now walked down the street. Today, if even today, Evander Holyfield walks, they know yeah. him. Yeah, exactly. You know, if we put Tyson on the street, I saw that, by the way, I saw Mauricio, there was a great uh, talk you did with Tyson, amazing one. If you put Tyson walk down the street in Berlin, you'd have to call the police. There'd be a, there'd be a roadblock, you know? So it's, it, it, in Europe, it is a bit different. It is that, but the other weights feed off that. 
You know, it's the other way to feed off that. We just had the season where we saw, you know, the uh, a lot of small, uh, the, the two smaller weights in the WBSS. They they work very well because there were because there is a hype around boxing again, and Tyson Fury has a lot to do with that. A lot to do with that. Well, I think he he was very smart, or his team was very smart. One fight before the rematch, he came out. It was Mexican Independence. He yeah. came out with the sombrero. <laughs> yeah. He came cool. out with the Mexican music yes, singer, singing. Yeah. And yeah. and you know what? Now now he's yeah. not just big in Europe. He's not not only big with the American fans in the U.S., but now the Mexican fans are saying, "I like this yeah. Tyson Fury because he did it in a respectful yeah. way." And then the guy goes out and fights, you know. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and 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 let's face it, uh, I don't know the percentages, but the American boxing fans are mainly Latinos. Yes, so, yes, absolutely. So, he, so, so he, you know, he's he's a genius as well in the way he taps into certain things. I mean, you know, he, I. I don't know, even know if he went down on purpose in the last round against Wilder and waited for the count to stand up like the <laughs> Undertaker. You know, he, he could make it up. You know, um, he's, he the yeah. he's the yes. perfect entertainer, Tale. He's the perfect entertainer. He does yeah. everything, I believe, with a plan. He yeah. is a, he has some ideas and he does it. He's not worried. He's no he's no a pussy. He's a real man. No, he knows what he's doing. Man. He's a people. I got I got asked by um. By, an, uh, by a journalist in England, he said to me, "So, how do you see uh, how do you see Tyson Fury as a box?" I said, "Listen, Tyson Fury didn't learn to box. He didn't start boxing, right? He didn't start boxing at 12, 13, or like Joshua at seventeen or eighteen. He started boxing when he was a sperm, right? He is the product of generations and generations." of fighting of a family that has been in the fighting game of its bare knuckle with gloves without gloves on the street in the ring for generations and generations it's not like he came out and said oh well am i going to be a footballer or a fighter it was never a decision for him to make he was always going to be a fighter so when i've sat with him uh, quite a few fights and listen to if you listen to tyson fury talk about a fight during a fight it's fascinating if he has the motivation one day to become a trainer, he can be one of the greatest trainers ever. He reads a fight wow. like I've never wow. sat next to someone more interesting to listen to it. We all get it wrong. You know, you got it wrong, Roberto. You're one of the best matchmakers on the planet. You got it wrong against, against, uh, with Pacquiao. Yeah. We yeah, get yeah, it yeah. wrong. We've, listen, I'm, we've, I'm not a matchmaker. I, 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 I'm, I'm, I work on the TV side of things and whatever. But at the end of the day, we all are in this here. We all get it wrong, right? But this guy, when you sit next to him, he can read a fight like it's uh, like he's reading a uh, reading a map. You know. Well, you're you're right because it based on the first fight, I thought personally going into the second fight, there's not much more Tyson can do. All yeah. he did is he took away the right hand, and yeah. Deontay showed without the right hand. I, I I'm really you know one dimensional in that sense, yeah. but. I said Deontay can make the adjustments. He can move, move to left. Once, yeah. once he ad- lands that right hand, I don't think Tyson will get up. What I is agree. Tyson doing the rematch? What mm. does he do? He doesn't stay away. He takes he it. Pushes him on the back foot. He doesn't. He can't throw the right because he's on the back foot all night. <laughs> but it's now incredible. he becomes the aggressor. He smothers yeah. the right yeah. hand. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, yeah. Deontay wasn't prepared for that fight, and, yeah. and you know it, it backfired on. But Tyson was marvelous. How he had. In two different fights, he fought two different, you know, two different styles. Yeah, totally. With you, with you, totally. And, and, and did you, ex- did again, you expect that, Kale, Did you expect that he will change like this in the second fight? I, I, Ahmed, I, I swear, you go and look on the RTL website. I predicted the seventh round knockout by Tyson Fury. <laughs> I, I, oh, swear. I said to Robert Diaz, Deontay Wilder will win. I was sure that he will make it better in the. Second fight. I, I thought as well. I thought as well. I, was, I said we already saw he can drop him. Yes. And I know yeah. because I did 33 of his fights of Deontay. The right hand's for real. Yes. Anybody he touches goes to sleep. You see but, Luis Ortiz, how he knocked him down yeah. in his last fight and before. You and... know, the, the fight, the previous fight by Fury against Wallin. Yeah. Was was very uh Limited. I mean, ordinary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ordinary. That 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 was a. That, I think that's what makes a greater uh, surprise for the way he turned out to 
to win the title. It didn't look like he had the first fight with Wilder, then two fights that were very ordinary. And then boom. I think Mauricio, though, I mean, I, I, uh, we promoted Wally for a lot of fights in Sweden. He's a very, he's a nice guy. He's a, he's a very average, average fighter, I must say. He had a great night that night. But I think that's always the danger in boxing when you have almost, it was almost like a pro fight, wasn't it? It was, we're waiting for the big one. So it's like almost like a, a tennis exhibition match. But you can't do that in boxing. <laughs> it's like the most dangerous thing you can do because while he might be an average fighter compared to Tyson Fury, but the motivation, you remember Axel Schultz, George Foreman, right? Axel Schultz was like a Varlene, yeah? He came over, they were planning the big fight, I think it was Foreman Tyson at the time. This was the sort of, you know, the, the show fight to add, you know, to make the contract more tasty for, for Big George. And, and, and Schultz, he got robbed, but he, I mean, he won, he won by four or five rounds a minute at least. And, Absolutely. And, and it was, it was a very similar situation. You know, it was, it was touch and go with a cut. I mean, the biggest danger was they, they called it to the cards or the cut. You know, they just, they, they, it was a punch. It was ruled a punch. You know, so, so at the end of the day, it was, um, it was one of those ones. Sometimes it's better not to but take again, that fight and again, wait for your big fight. Heavyweight fight. Yeah. Was the heavyweight in Germany. Sold a lot at five o'clock a.m. It was yeah. high TV spectators. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Correct. correct. So you you can't compare. That's why I said Holyfield and Lewis from the past fighters. Because if you compare, if you put boxing on a table, you have to put heavyweight because heavyweight yeah. sells in the world. Of course, mm -hmm. Latino countries. Mm -hmm. But but also also what when you mention Holyfield. And you mentioned fighters like that is they all lost and see we can still talk about these fighters 20 years later because or more because they fought everybody you know that they're the, legends the, the fabulous four the duran hearns hagler leonard we still talk look kaylee just said he still watches the fight leonard and hearns uh, you know i mean hagler and hearns because great fighters it doesn't matter the old or, or if they lost five or six times. Agreed. As long you know, I did a, a very fun exercise on Friday with Leonard and with Chavez. So we're going to do it again. Uh, we're going to create the greatest boxer in history. So you three are going to decide uh, by category, okay, the name. So it's going to be power, chin, Jab, speed, footwork, skills, and heart. So we start with power. You gotta, you gotta reach consensus on one fighter. Who would you pick for the power? Tyson. Tyson. Ernie Shavers. Two to yes. one, Roberto. Two to one. Okay. okay. <laughs> Split two. decision. Yeah, two to one. Tyson. Okay. Chin. Holyfield. Oh, interesting. Ooh, yeah, 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 yeah. Look at Riddick Bow, number one, Holyfield. Look at all his fights with Tyson. You're right. Yeah. He got always clipped and hurt. This man has a chin. Look when he fought Lewis. Look when he fought as an older guy. He is a special yeah. man. I was actually going to throw a wild card and throw in Carl Froch, but uh, I just remember, he, he, yeah. Uh, I was just, but Holyfield yeah. fought more of guys. You know, yeah, yeah. 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 You. Holyfield, Holyfield, I'm with you. 3-0. Chin, oh, my God. Yeah, Chavez, 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 Chavez senior for me, Chin. He yeah. won over 100 fights. Oh, yeah, I agree. Chavez, yeah, right. good, but, you know, he never get a punch from heavyweight. I agree with you, Roberto. <laughs> but he's not, he's not supposed to get punched by a heavyweight. <laughs> <laughs> he's a little guy. <laughs> Five, six. <laughs> so, you, you have Akbar Holyfield, Diaz, Chavez. Chavez. Senior, senior. Let me clear the senior. You have senior. Uh, Kale. You said Holyfield. 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 Okay, so Chin Holyfield. Jab. Jab. Oh. Henry Masker. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. To be honest, Jab. Lennox Go. Lewis. Lennox Go. Lewis. Okay. I was just about That's to say Lennox Lewis. I was afraid yeah, a man Lewis. was going to say Holyfield. 
Not on Jab, but Lewis Lewis. Lewis. I like Lewis. that. Lewis. I'm going to go Lewis. with Larry Holmes. I'm going to go with Larry oh, Holmes. Yeah, Larry Holmes was very good. I agree. You we'll give Roberto it. that one. I mean, let's give Roberto hey, that give one. Me one. Give me one. Give me one. I give Roberto. We go with Holmes. Larry Holmes. I go with Roberto. Speed. Speed. Roy Jones Jr. when he was good. Yeah. No? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Hold on. I like Sugar Ray Leonard. Because Leonard. Leonard. I'm just Leonard. Leonard. Yeah. Leonard. Because Leonard. Jones Leonard. was fast, taking yes. away Leonard. punches with one-two. Leonard. 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 And Leonard yes. could let a combination yes. go of ten punches. We go with right? Leonard. Three-nil. Leonard. Everyone agree, Leonard. 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 Leonard on in a row, Robert. <laughs> <laughs> now, footwork. Footwork as well for me, but, Muhammad um, Ali. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'll footwork. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. I agree. Muhammad Ali. He's a heavyweight. He, he, he's he, not he supposed to the Ali that shuffle. Fast. I mean, we we got to give it to him just on the shuffle alone. Yes. You know? Yes. Yes. Skills, boxing skills, ring generalship. Ali. Pacquiao Mayweather. Ali. De La Hoya. Hey, you have to say that, Roberto. <laughs> <laughs> if you go with boxing skills, then I would take really Sugar Ray Leon. From skills? Joe Calzaghe I mean, was on the bench. But... I mean, May Mayweather, you, you need to look at as well. Yeah, yes, you, can, you have to count him too. Mayweather Leonard, it's a toss up for me. Yes, Mayweather one of those just... guys. Is there a category, Mauricio, for balls? Huh? Is, is there a category for balls? Of course, heart. <laughs> Cojonas? Cojonas? It's, it's called, Cojonas? It's called heart, yeah, the balls. Ah, okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, watching you, I had to stop this side and, and take uh, some drink. Oh, you're oh, oh, that Beautiful. The Salud. The tequila we had there. Salud. Oy, oy, oy. Wow, that's what we're missing here. Robertito. Yes, I'm, I'm, I'm a bloody MEN. Let me, let me get a little shot going here. It's early here, but you know. I can't do it. We have Ramadan. Oh, have no, Ramadan. yes. <laughs> but, guys, I have to tell you one thing. I hope coronavirus goes over and we meet again in person. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. It is, it is, I'm very honored and touched to see you guys on this way of communication. You are Likewise. my bro. Kale, you very have important. the right speech. I know how you are. We are great guys. And our president, like I said, is my papa. My, so, first, my first international flight will be to Mexico. Well, my well, two. You all my two. And we meet here. Yeah. I love it. I have I my love word. It. We, we have a mandatory already with Ahmed. And by the time this call ends, the heavyweight will be the mandatory as well. Come on, Ahmed. Come on. Say I Papa one more time. Papa, one more time and we get that mandatory. <laughs> <laughs> Look, what time is it? Oh, oh my watch you is in Turkey. <laughs> my watch is in Turkey. <laughs> so who, the heart, the cojones, balls? Hagla. 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 But to be honest, I have to tell you one thing. For me, every Mexican fighter, 99%, has a lot of cojones. Yeah, Barrera's up there, actually. Yeah. Barrera, Chavez Sr., and uh, you know, all the Mexicans, Salido, whatever, they have, everybody has cojones. They are special guys. So, and when you put cojones, you can take Golovkin, you see Canelo, what a guy from where he came, the Mexicans. They have cojones. And if you go by the heavyweight, I think Holyfield, he had a real cojones. Muhammad Ali always. And, uh, you know. You know, that's tough. that's a very tough one for me because of all, you know, last night I was, I put a fight for my son. Ed, from Robert, the old fights. Sorry. And I have one guy who has seen on some, you don't know him, he had cojones. And my Avni Yildirim, you know him. He has a lot of cojones. Even when he got knocked out by Eubank, he got knocked out when he was knocked and he still started to beat him. He wanted to fight him. He was not going back or taking... Remember, Kale, when, when Eubank knocks out 
yielded him in the third round. And Ahmed, he wanted to punch Eubank, the referee, or whoever was. <laughs> Salud. <laughs> you know, yeah, it was a hot atmosphere that night. I tell you, I was sweating. I was thinking, fuck me. If this goes to a tight points decision, I've got no oh, yeah. idea what I happened. Had, to do. I had 6,000 friends there. You saw it. I saw, I saw. I think there were 7,000, actually, my friend. Yeah, 7,000. One hand, Jake. Oh, man, the best. You, should, you should have been next to the timekeeper or the bell guy. The we could have <laughs> continued. But the best, the best part was, honestly, was the weigh-in when they had the sign, Welcome to Hell, which, you know, is associated in, in, in Western Europe with the football club Galatasaray. They have this Stumble. famous Welcome to Hell. And... And uh, the Eubanks, they thought they were fighting in Germany. They didn't realize that, uh, that there would be 6,000 Turks, you know, and half of them at the way in with the signs, welcome to hell. To be fair to, to, be fair to, to, to Junior, he was, he was very cool and calm, I've got to say. He could have easily lost it that night. That atmosphere was red hot, red, red, yes, red, uh, red hot, red hot. Wasn't he, there, was there fights in the stands? A lot of fights after? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Half color. I have a video. I can send you. It's not, not so bad. Before not so the fight. Before because the fight. Ahmed, calm down, everybody. <laughs> yes, Mauricio <laughs> Suleiman said to me, Ahmed, you have to cool down. Let them join. Let them celebrate. They are the winners. Uh, go and congratulate them. And I did it. And yeah, in this yeah. right side, one oh, of my fighters. Thank God Mauricio was there. Because otherwise, <laughs> Ahmed, he would he would have fought the whole corner in the other side. And Maurizio, <laughs> if Mauricio would not be there, there would be a mess. Of course. I, of course. I swear, I could not control it. I wasn't thinking. because. But then I saw Mauricio myself. I said, I can't do it. <laughs> <laughs> and my fighter, one of my fighters, he's now in prison because he beat some guy. He said to me, hit your right hand and we start the war. I said to him, shut up. Are you crazy? <laughs> Mauricio Suleiman, he kills me. I can't do it. My papa kills me. He gives me right and left. And, <laughs> and then I'm finished. I can't talk. I, I describe Ahmed with one word, remember? What's your word, Ahmed? I'm a very patient ah. guy. Huh? I'm a very <laughs> calm person. I'm calm. a very calm person. Calm, patient. You, you forgot the name, the word I, I said about you? What was it? Predictable. Predictable, yes, sorry. And I asked my wife, I said, what does it mean, predictable? I watch in Google. <laughs> <laughs> and then you saw a mad picture right there. And you said, oh, wait. <laughs> I mean, you know, if you get Ahmed mad, I mean, it's very predictable, very easy to... But I think it goes hand in hand. And I'll say this, obviously not, not brown nosing or anything on Ahmed, but loyalty. Oh, yes. Yes. And I know firsthand, not, not, you know, whenever he speaks about boxing, there's always WBC and Suleiman. Don Jose, Mauricio. I mean, he is... It was funny because one night... We're having dinner in LA. Mauricio came and only spent five minutes with us, but you know, that's a different story. <laughs> and at that moment, we had been talking about how Ahmed has been 100% just, you know, very loyal to the WBC and, and very grateful for everything that uh, the Suleiman family has done for him. And Pepe Gomez calls at the moment right there. Un saludo a Pepe, hey, beautiful picture. Beautiful picture. Yes. And when Pepe called, I said, wow, very similar, Pepe and Ahmed. Very similar. You know, they're both very grateful. Both feel, you know, the, have the loyalty to the WBC. And the, what brings me in there is I'm good friends with both of them. So, I mean, that, that was just a very funny moment that night having dinner. <laughs> Thank you, Roberto. And That's I know nice. that you. And we walked oh, away with the mandatory that night. Oh, That's sorry. a good restaurant in uh, LA, huh? On the LA. Top. Yes, yes. It's a very yes. high floor. Yes, Le Boucherie. Yeah, very nice. You've been there, Khaled? I know the name, so I'm thinking top floor, yeah? 
at the intercontinental. intercontinental. Oh, yeah, yeah, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. I love it. It was when I love it LA. was when um, I know it. guy who did the car accident. What was his name? Uh, oh, when he fought, it was Benavides against Durrell the next day. Yeah, yes, and the main event was the guy from Spence. BBC. Spence, Spence, Spence. Porter. Spence. Special kid. Oh, got it, got Sean it, got Porter, it. Sean Porter, Spence. Sean Porter, Spence. What a fight. That was my best fight I ever saw live. Yeah. <laughs> well, the time is uh, running, and I think we have enough uh, anecdotes to be here, like three hours at least. We're in bus in three days. Salud. Salud. Right, we get the tequila out, we stay three days, man. <laughs> we stay. Thank you, Kale. <laughs> I Bus. can't wait to see all of you personally and give there you guys a hug. Right in Germany. There was the time right. in Germany is now 9.25. Well, you know, I want to thank uh, yeah. in the I have learned in these WBC talks to do something, okay? Because we're far away, but we're still close. So we're gonna give each other a hug. Just come near the camera. Yes. Uh, <laughs> <not>. <laughs> uh, thank you, thank you, Mauricio. Thank you, Victor. Thank you, Sochi, and everybody for making this possible. Kelly, I mean, all the best to you guys and your families and to, to everybody you else. I wish thank you all peace, love, happiness, and we'll get through this. See you on the other side. Absolutely. Muchas gracias, Roberto. Se te quiere. Igualmente, Mauricio. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Muchas gracias. Good to see you guys. This was round 24 of the WBC Talks. Stay home, stay safe. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.